the rotten tomatoes part of the morning. Um, augmented UCL, uh, where are we? So I am a consultant for Arthrex and I do receive a royalty on a kit that was created to support this technique. So Lyle Kane published our data in 2010 on UCL reconstruction, over 1,200 patients, all of them were modified Job, done by me, Andrews, or, or Lyle. Average return time was 12 months and 84% return to play with a low complication rate. Since then, we've had a lot of other techniques, you know, that were available at the time. In fact, the first time I ever did UCL reconstruction was in Dave Alchek's OR as a resident doing the docking technique. There are hybrid techniques. All of them have acceptable success rates, but repair has a pretty bad history. Lyle Norwood was actually the first in 1981 to report on four of these. And John Kahn, when, we, when he wrote up Frank Job's original patients uh, in an article published in 1992, uh, on 70 patients, and imagine that, 70 patients with UCL over a 13-year period. Gosh, we see that in a month now. Um, but in that paper, there were 14 repairs that often get overlooked. And of those 14 repairs, there were uh, seven major leaguers, and only two of the seven got back, so less than 30%, as opposed to 75% of the major leaguers that had reconstruction. And then Andrews published the same data, basically, uh, 10 years later, with Fred Azar uh, showing again, 30% uh, repairs got back. So on the basis of this, two of the giants of our profession, maybe two of the best elbow surgeons ever said UCL repair was a bad idea. And then Buddy Savoy, who's a really gifted elbow surgeon, uh, now down at Tulane, published two articles in the mid 2000s, first in female athletes, and then subsequently in, in overhead athletes, mostly male showing 58 out of 60 return to play at same or higher level in less than six or an average of six months with a higher success rate than what we were seeing with reconstruction. These were both published in our trade journal, the American Journal of Sports Medicine, and went largely overlooked by m almost everybody, uh, myself included, Andrews, everybody. I don't think most people paid much attention to this. And so what about revisions? You know, revision UCL reconstruction is probably one of the worst operations any of us do. The success rate is pathetic. Um, in the major league study that, that Stan Conti published, uh, average return time of 21 months and uh, only 42% were able to return for 10 games. I mean, of all the things that I do in my practice, this might be the worst outcome procedure that we ever do. Most of us like to function in the 90% level. This is a terrible operation. So Andrew sat across me in a case one day and he said, Jeff, why, we're doing too much surgery. This I can't. Or we were looking at some of these ligaments and we're wondering if we're even operating on the right elbow. Some of these things just don't look that bad. And he said, we got to come up with a better option for this. This was in like 2010, 2011. So as we're looking at some of these things, you know, they don't have bad tissue. Some of these injuries are relatively small. Is reconstruction really the best option? Well, at, at the time, it was the only option. So we've all talked about the anatomy of the ligament. Chris showed it very nicely in the uh, in the cadaver video he did, but we did a study looking at uh, with a three space digitizer looking at the anatomy of the insertions, uh, origin insertion, and interestingly, the medial epicondylar origin is really on the anterior face of the medial epicondyle. It's not on the tip. The death of a UCL procedure is to be too posterior, and I think we're all at a point now where we recognize that. And then there's a much longer. Uh, distal producing uh, fibers that go all the way down a couple of centimeters down the uh, down the ulna with the centroid of the attachment at the sublime tubercle where the single dot is. So there, this novel construct, the internal brace, is really an existing bunch of technology that a guy named Gordon Mackay put together and called it the internal brace. Gordon's a foot and ankle surgeon from Scotland. If you ever get to meet him, he usually has a kilt on really good guy. And he did this first in the ankle for, for ligaments in the ankle and had success with it. But it's two small plastic anchors with a, with a fiber tape uh, spread between them. This is the construct that he called the internal brace. We added the other suture that you see on the far right side of the slide. It's a super suture size zero to help with the repair because I wanted to do what Buddy did. So this is the internal brace in a cadaver and basically we took it and we applied what buddy had learned where he was using just anchor technology and which wasn't existent back when frank job and jim andrews were publishing their results they didn't have super sutures and they didn't have 30 years worth of experience and they didn't have all these things so buddy took it and repaired them we wanted to i wanted to try repairing it and augmenting it so who's a repair candidate well the slide on the left the picture on the left this is really healthy ligament tissue. It's just a vulst off a bone. We repair that ligament 
everywhere else in the body. Pick another ligament. We're even doing it with ACLs now. We repair that ligament very successfully almost everywhere else in the body. On the right side, this is a large projecting osteophyte, and that is gray heterogeneous crud. Crud is a very medical term in Alabama. That is crud, and that is not good tissue. I would not advocate for trying to repair that because it's not going to turn around and turn into ligament tissue. So with the recent success by Savoie and the basic science studies showing good time zero success, the first patient I did was August 8th of 2013. And then we published on 128 of them. We've now done nearly 600 of them. And Arthrex estimates that there's been over 3,000 of them done in the United States. Interestingly, in 2019, 25% of all NCAA UCL surgeries were, re were repaired with internal brace. That number is now up to close to 40% uh, this past season. So um, can somebody swipe that up? That's my alarm that I need to eat something. Um, we lost 17 to follow up. There's mostly males all in their dominant arm. The level of play is what you would expect. About two thirds high school. The rest of them are mostly college. This is in the early days of this. So we didn't have a whole lot of other people besides these high school guys. 87% followed, 92% returned to play at the same or higher level. And they rated their elbows very well. Interestingly, the KJOC scores at 91 were actually better than the average major league player that never had an injury. Now these guys were not major leaguers, but the, just to show you the KJOC numbers. Whether we did an ulnar nerve transposition or not made no difference. The p-value was high. I've been transposing more lately than not because I think if I leave it in place in situ decompression, as I said earlier, you get some scarring around the nerve. Didn't really matter whether it was proximal or distal, partial or complete. No difference in the extent or location of injury in terms of the outcome. Not a lot of major complications. There was one heterotopic bone, one retained stitch. I had to do an ulnar nerve transposition when I had, and I had to revise one that got loose after I did it. They all returned to play. The heterotopic bone one's an interesting one that Chris was Chris got involved with. This is actually patient number two. She was a gymnast. So I did four of these in six months before, and then I waited six months before I did another one. I wanted to see what happened with the first four. This was the second patient. I have her permission to say that she was a gymnast. It was her non-dominant arm. She had a lateral sided injury that required repair. She had evulsed off her whole lateral sided structures. So I repaired those and I went over to the medial side and did an internal brace. Um, she was back uh, doing her gymnastic stuff at four months after effectively an elbow dislocation with that range of motion. That was about six to eight weeks post-op. So I wanted to see how it worked in other situations before I moved forward with it. So the average return time for baseball is just over six months. Buddy published 40 patients doing the same thing. This was last year, 92.5%, same numbers, two-year follow-up, 92, 93%. Um, uh, Matt Smith published in the Journal of Shoulder and Elbow Surgery. We had done a comparison to the modified Job. Matt did a comparison to the docking technique using match pair cadavers. Ultimately, the stiffness and failure load uh, were what you'd expect them to be. They were at least as good as what we were doing with the reconstructions. Um, gymnasts and cheerleaders, about four and a half to five months back. Wrestlers, about the same thing. Um, we have some upcoming publications, and uh, one of them actually is already out, in the non-throwing athletes and in the non-baseball overhead athletes. Basically, internal brace was at least as good as reconstruction in these people. The one group that I would say we got to be careful with is javelin throwers. They seem to maybe have a little bit more trouble. So I've now revised eight prior reconstructions using this. Five of the eight had modified job. Uh, seven of the eight were torn on the medial epicondylar side, one on the ulnar attachment. I used a little bit bigger screw. Six have returned. The other two are less than eight months post-op. I go a little longer on this than the primaries, and I've seen a couple of these. So this is a 39-year-old that had a previous reconstruction that I actually scrubbed on with Dr. Andrews in 2011. He pitched seven season and seasons at the major league level, had symptoms in 2019, couldn't compete. And this was his MRI. So you can see this large mass of tissue, which is his native ligament and his graft uh, evulsed off the medial epicondyle. So he came to me and he said, I'm not going through a revision. I don't have 18 months. I'm either retiring or you're doing the brace. So again, kind of perfect patient to do this on. I spent the, at least two thirds of the operation digging his ulnar nerve out because we had transposed it. And I did the internal brace. You can see the large detachment of the tissue. I took a burr, I got a bleeding surface and I put the internal brace in there. 
Um, he has pitched three seasons as a starter in Major League Baseball and is going back at age 42, plans to sign another free agent deal to go back for his fourth Major League season as a starter. Uh, he's been a starter the whole time from the time he came back. So my thoughts are that as with other ligamentous injuries in the body, end divulsions of the UCL can be repaired back for the right ones. It is a uh, biologic uh, enhanced tape, but it is not a ligament replacement. I caution people on thinking this is replacing the ligament. It's not. If you don't have good tissue, I don't think this is going to hold up over a large scale number of people as a good idea. It may be a better option for revision. So far, it has been. But remember, revision reconstruction is a really bad operation. I don't know if the tape is structural or simply a scaffold, and maybe it changes over time as the recovery proceeds. Do you need to do an ulnar nerve transposition? I don't think it really makes a difference. Um, I think you do what works best in your hands. So I have cautious optimism in those with tissue that is appropriate for this. I don't like using it in people with bad tissue, although I've been talked into it by people who said, I do not want a reconstruction. If I don't get back, I'll take it. I've done a couple of these and I, they've worked out okay, but I still think in, if we were to play this out among a large scale of patients, it's not going to hold up as well. Um, so the decision to perform a repair with internal brace and intraoperative one, and it should be based on quality and quantity of tissue, but the level of play, the velocity, the age, the transposition or not, the degree of the tear doesn't seem to make a difference. I've got people that have thrown over a hundred miles an hour with this thing. It doesn't seem to matter once it's healed. And now there's some newer hybrid reconstruction procedures. I know Keith has done some of these. Neil Eltrosh is doing some of these. I think we got to see. I, I'm excited about these things. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I'm not opposed to any of them. I, I think the more we can learn about these things, the better. So as always, there's there's a lot to learn. So thank you.